half past ten on Wednesday, the 3rd of June, and you're watching UTV Live tonight. Good evening, I'm Paul Clark, and welcome to the programme. In the Commons this afternoon, the Northern Ireland Secretary, Sean Woodward, said he was prepared to break the bureaucracy of devolution to help thousands of savers hit by the collapse of the Presbyterian Mutual Society. And many of the 9,500 people felt that they'd been forgotten as the society fell outside the government's safety net for savers in the high street banks when it collapsed last year. Niall Donnelly has been speaking to one man who lost more than £100,000. He says investors have been betrayed by church and state. They fervently believed their money was safe. And we, di we didn't doubt it at all. Seeing themselves as savers, not speculators. They weren't really transparent with their investors. They put more than their faith in the Presbyterian Mutual Society. And Harry Hume, a pensioner from Cloch in County Antrim, was one of them. I guarantee Eight years ago, he and his wife invested over £100,000 in the PMS, money they'd both worked hard for for years by running a farm and a restaurant. The couple thought things were going all right until the society folded last year and an administrator was appointed to take control. Now Harry and thousands like him can't get their money out. Although stressed, Harry's also concerned about other pensioners with much smaller investments. For seven months now, they have not been able to get any interest or get any of their money out. And some of them want to uh, maybe buy oil or uh, pay the rates or uh, to uh, buy the grandchildren presents uh, or um, maybe have a holiday. And uh, this has really uh, hit these people. And the outcome, what is more worrying is, that uh, because of the insolvency rules, if the administrator continues the way he's doing, uh, those people with under 20,000 who are members will be the last people to get any money. Harry was just one of several investors protesting at the Presbyterian General Assembly being held in Belfast this week. Our message uh, uh, at the opening of the General Assembly uh, was betrayal by church and state. The church took legal advice early on and they were, of course, told that uh, stay clear of this because you could get involved and you might be at risk. They dive for cover, and then they left us uh, without any moral or financial support. The Assembly recognised the deep hurt investors have suffered and offered prayers and support, but no financial bailout. I think it'll be hard for the church to deliver you know, massive amounts of money, if not impossible. Uh, but there, the, the assembly will be looking at ways in which it can do something positive and something helpful for the benefit of these people. We contacted the PMS administrator for an interview today, but he felt unable to give one at this time. The Presbyterian investors feel cheated because the government guaranteed deposits of up to £50,000 in banks but made no such undertaking to the PMS because it was not regulated by the Financial Services Authority. During Northern Ireland questions today, the Secretary of State was repeatedly pressed to provide help for those who had lost money. He offered maybe just the slightest chink of light. There is an issue here about whether or not this should have been regulated. It was registered, it should have been regulated. There is an issue which I do want and continue to want the FSA to look at. But Mr Speaker, I'm not trying to evade our responsibility. If we can find a way to help these people, we should. And I'm prepared to break the bureaucracy to do it if it's at all possible. By bureaucracy, Sean Woodward was referring to whether or not the issue should be addressed by Westminster or Stormont. Tonight, Local Enterprise Minister Arlene Foster welcomed his remarks. But she said the regulation of industrial and provident societies is not a devolved matter. She said her department's responsibilities related to registration, not regulation. The minister said that was an important distinction. Legally, the church and the PMS are separate organisations, but investors like Harry say damage has been done. I would think it has already split the church because uh, I know that uh, the number of families this year has fallen by 970. And I know, I, I remain a Presbyterian, but 
I know people who have start, stopped paying in to the Presbyterian Church, and they're going to stop paying in until this is sorted. The Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, and the First Minister, Peter Robinson, are due to meet in a fortnight's time to discuss this entire issue. There's no doubt that the thousands of investors and people in the church generally will be hoping that those talks can lead at least to the start of finding a solution to what is a very large financial problem. Niall Donnelly, UTV Live tonight at Church House.